Greetings, everyone. This is Ayman Tarabishi, ICSB Executive Director and Deputy Chair of the Department of Management at the GW School of Business. I am delighted to announce our new session, ICSB Exchange session here. It's titled Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises, MSMEs in Kenya, Challenges and Opportunities. And first of all, I would like to introduce the, the, the panel, the panelists for today. His name is Dr. Moses Ngoze, is a senior lecturer in the School of Business at the Technical University in Mombasa, in Kenya, where he teaches and provides academic leadership in entrepreneurship and management, science disciplines at undergraduate and graduate levels. He is also the associate consultant researcher of management at Capital Strategies Kenya Limited in Nairobi in Kenya. His research interests are concentrated in the areas of corporate entrepreneurship dimensions, financial performance, business environments, manufacturing firms, BDSs, MSMEs, industrial economics, and sub-Saharan Africa. Moses, it is a pleasure and honor to have you on our webinar today. Yeah, thank you very much, Ayman, uh, and the ICSB community. And also, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Jeffrey Alves for having to be, to, to, to be the panelist uh, today. Thank you very much. Now, thank you. Uh, let me introduce you. Dr. Jeff Alves, and then I'll hand to, uh, to Jeff. Then, the, uh, the, uh, I would like to also introduce Dr. Jeffrey Alves, the editor of the Journal of the International Council for Small Business. He will be the moderator for today's session. Dr. Jeffrey Alves, greetings. Thank you. It's good to be here. So, Dr. Jeff, the floor is yours for you to introduce the session briefly and then hand it over to Moses. Thank you, Ayman. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, we, we in academe tend to focus on are, is, is data. And there has to be sufficient data for us to do our, our uh, research. Um, there is some data out there that very strongly indicates that micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises dominate the economic landscape. And even before the pandemic that we're all going through right now, um, politicians and policymakers, economic development people have begun to recognize the importance of small and medium sized enterprises. But what does not seem to be happening and, you know, is that is the um, work with the developing countries. Um, there is work being done by the International Labor Organization, by the UN, by, by the International Finance Corporation and World Bank. Um, but the reality is economic global growth is not going to come from the developed countries. It's going to come from the developing countries. And so they, today's session is particularly germane to addressing that issue. And so without any further comments, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Moses for his presentation. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeffrey, for such a good uh, introduction. And also thank you very much, uh, Ayman, for introducing, for wonderful introduction. Now, let, without further ado, let me go to the micro, small, and medium enterprises in Kenya, challenges and opportunities. Now, uh, what motivates what motivated me to look at this particular area as a way uh, as an important aspect in this particular webinar now first let's understand that the micro small and medium enterprises have always been a backbone of most countries you know talk about developing countries talk about developed countries now coming to developing countries specifically africa you know uh, we have this MSC, macro, small, and medium enterprises being credited, especially the manufacturing sector, in the growth of our economy. So given most of the studies that have been conducted, starting from the International Labor Organization study of 1970s that discovered that in Africa, we have the informal sector. And there are studies in Ghana and Africa shed light about the micro, small, and medium enterprises. So welcome, let's look at these micro, small, and medium enterprises in Kenya. Now the agenda, I would like to look at it from academic angle, that is from research angle, you know, because, well, I'm, I'm a practitioner, but not really, uh, uh, you know, 
the, uh, being uh, in, in a micro small enterprise uh, as, as, as a practitioner more, but I'm, I'm a researcher and an academician. So we are going to look at the facts about Kenya, the MSMEs defined, why SMEs, challenges faced by SMEs, opportunities, and then we're going to conclude. But fact, let's look at Kenya. What is this Kenya, you know? Now, Kenya is Eastern part of Africa, you know? And, uh, you know, when you look at it, it has dominated so much, you know? Uh, currently, you know, we talk of our population being 47.6 million, and uh, that's quite remarkable because why this population, looking at the area, slightly, uh, you know, less than uh, Texas, you know, if you take, uh, if you're talking about America, Texas is more, a little bit, uh, you know, more miles, square miles than Kenya. But looking at this particular population, how can we sustain this particular population? Now, also look at the GDP of the country. You know, this GDP, when you look at it, can it be able to sustain uh, this particular population? And that's why we're talking about the major sector, that is, uh, agriculture industry and services and then there is uh, this micro small medium uh, enterprises now uh, before i go to the challenges and the opportunities that are there first of all as academician we usually ask yourself what is this energy miss you know micro small medium enterprises in africa basically we have been defining these enterprises using uh, uh number of employees and also the turnovers that uh, you know are accrued from these enterprises like for instance you know talk about micro enterprise these are the ones that dominate you know talk about them having one to nine employees and then when you look at the income that the the turnover that they can be able to give out which is equivalent to the amount of capital they are investing is 5,000 US dollars, equivalent to uh, around uh, talk of 500,000 Kenya shillings for those in Kenya who know about our currency, you know, one US dollar is equivalent to 100, uh, 100, uh, 100 Kenya shillings. Now the small enterprises do follow, you know, from, uh, from 10 to 50 and then the medium enterprises. So this is the definition of most of these enterprises. And you'll discover that uh, mostly the ones that dominate so much are micro and small uh, enterprises. Now, why do we have this dominating so much at the expense of medium enterprises? And yet we're talking about micro, small, medium enterprises. You know, we're talking about it. The reason is that a large proportion of them large proportion of the population, about 75, I mean 75 percent are in this particular sector. And then more than 80 percent of Kenyans are working in this particular industry. Now all of this particular aspect getting to innovative aspects, these have been spoken about in most of uh, uh, the, the literature that uh, we have about the importance of uh, this macro, small and medium uh, enterprises. Now, let me go to the challenges because when you look at the challenges, these challenges can be able to give us the opportunities. Now, I've, I have some pictures there that are indicating the typical uh, scenario about this, the MSMEs in 1990s. Now, they, there was a scholar uh, from Cambridge University known as David King who came to Kenya and uh, through the International Labour Organization, you know, used this term, Juakali. Actually, Juakali is a Kiswahili name, meaning uh, working under hot sun, you know. And one of the issues, the challenges that this micro, small and medium enterprises used to have in 90s were the premises, where to work. And, you know, looking at those particular pictures, you'll see that most of them are working in the sunlight, you know you know, ranging from carpentry, you know, uh, uh, still up to the markets where they're selling uh, those particular agricultural products. So these challenges are accruing from, say, 
access to financial services, you know, during those particular time. And we're going to see that currently Kenya, you know, they are trying to address that particular issue, but not, uh, they have not addressed it uh, to, to the maximum, you know, limited access to infrastructure, poor market access, inadequate entrepreneurial skills, limited linkages with medium and large enterprises. Now, these linkages uh, you're going to see is the one that is also bringing a problem of uh, a problem in that we don't have these particular farms, this the macro, media, no macro, small, graduating to 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 to, to, to medium enterprises and also to large uh, enterprise. And then the competitive strengths, especially the commodities that come from Africa, you know, and that's why we, you know, when it comes to this, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, quality issues that come in the ISO are they ISO certified? Because when we are trying to export this particular product to outside the country, you know they need the standards. And also the many, uh, not forgetting lack of time. You know, uh, lack of time. Most of these being small entrepreneurs you know, don't have a lot of time. You know, on how to figure out how to make these enterprises. You know to have good models, models of expansion. And then uh, many of them are mainly, mainly face inadequate financial resources. You know, when I talk about financial resources, capital to expand, you know, do they have, what is their working capital? Can they be able to get enough capital expand? And then currently the natural calamity, I'll talk a little bit about natural calamity such as COVID-19 pandemic, you know, it has really affected this entrepreneurs, especially given that uh, most of them are in service sector, you know, when you look at the manufacturing sector, fashion sector does not occupy a very big proportion. Now, these particular challenges have led to what we are calling the missing gap in the small enterprises growth. What is this? You know, we know very well that as academicians, we talk about the growth in enter enterprises. You know, we have got the horizontal and then the vertical. You know, the vertical, you know, is the one that can be able to generate a lot of income and can also be able to look at it from the perspective of these farms growing. You know, and that's why we have so many micro, small and enterprises in Kenya at the expense of the medium, and then a little bit, 21% are large enterprises. So this has always been, you know, an issue in the country. So with this, you know, do we have opportunities? Do, do we have opportunities that we can be able uh, to talk about with these uh, particular enterprises? Now, opportunities are there, but how do we grab them? Like for example, in the country, currently we have got the mobile users, that is the mobile phone users has been growing tremendously. And that's why in Africa, Kenya has been, you know, talked of as the next Silicon Valley, you know. And, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, why? Because there are so many startups, you know, Kenyan youth are transforming uh, this particular technology of the mobile to, you know, to applications which we are seeing, uh, we are seeing in, in the currently in the market. Now, I will be able to share a little bit on a two, two minutes uh, video. It's going to be two minutes talking about uh, Kenya. So let me just try to, to, to get it. Actually, this particular video came from Bluebird. Moses, there might be some problems with the with with the bandwidth playing a video on um, on on Zoom here. But if you want to send, what we can do is post the link later on, just to make sure that people can watch it. Because we've experienced that sometimes playing video on Zoom is problematic. Moses, are you there? I'm there, I'm there. Okay.
Hi Moses. I don't yeah, think I'm the there, video I'm is playing. Yeah, okay. The video, the video is okay. Okay. No, Moses, the, the video is playing on your screen because you didn't scare, share the screen of the video. That's why so, so nobody's it, seeing it. That's why. Can it be seen? No, because it's, you have to share your screen on the video. So we wouldn't. Oh, we on the video. Oh, sorry, sorry, it. sorry. No, no, it's okay. You can see it. No, you have to actually stop the screen and show it again on the other screen. Oh, on the other screen. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, so now you have to stop and do it. So I urge you to move on and then we can do the video later. Okay, no problem. Sorry for that, sorry for that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry for that, can it, be, it can be seen now. Oh, Hello, again. No, not again. I think you just need to skip the video at this point. Yeah, I've skipped it. Okay, skipped so it. You're, you're back to your slides. You can continue with your slides. The, the slides can be seen. Sorry for that. It's okay. Now, uh, yeah, talking about the silicon, the next silicon, that is the Nairobi. Actually, Nairobi itself has got a lot of uh, 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 the startups that are coming up, and it's courtesy of this uh, uh, silicon, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, the mobile phone, maybe we can call it Frogol uh, innovation. Now, the Kenyan silicon, you know, has been credited one with the M-Pesa. What is M-Pesa? M-Pesa is a Kiswahili word meaning uh, uh, mobile money. You know, Pesa is a Kiswahili word meaning money. So, uh, you know, when you, you look at Kenyans nowadays, most of the Kenyans are doing the mobile transaction on uh, phones, you know. And it's a revolution that uh, has really come up and has taken Kenya, if, in fact, even East Africa nowadays, and even the whole world, you know, are coming to look at this M-Pesa, how it's working. And then talk about the, the M-Kesho, you know, still a product, uh, you know, an extension of this particular M-Pesa where we are talking of the mobile banking, you know, people can be able to, have the savings account. And uh, though there has been uh, the Central Bank of Kenya, that is the, the bank, the, the, the bank that controls all commercial banks is, you know, is trying to, you know, to ask these particular uh, mobile subscribers, the Safaricom, to come up with the laws that regulate this because it's going to be a virtual bank, a bank that you can move with it in your phone. And then we're also talking about the iHub, you know, where now the, in this iHub we have got a space of around 10,000 young people, those innovators who can be able to come up with apps. And we have, have these particular applications that are come up like iCow. That's iCow is where, you know, for the farmers, you know, they can get real time information about how to, you know, to, to take care of uh, uh, the animals and how to be able to ensure that they maximize production of milk and also beef. And then the mar matri route, the matri route, this is an application that uh, the, in Kenya, Matri means this public service was, you know, like cabs, you know, they, but now this was the usually, uh, you know, can be able to accommodate uh, around 16 to 48 uh, uh, people, you know, this Matri, you know, be notorious now, uh, they're calling uh, the jams, a lot, of, a lot of jams on the way. So this application enables, you know, uh, you, you know, on how to, 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 to organize the traffic and the Mawingu. So in short, this particular uh, uh, ICT, you know, has come up through the savannah, the, 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 the silicon savannah that is coming up in Kenya, you know, and the Sconza technology, which is being constructed to, you know, to afford, you know, where it's going to have a lot of, a, a lot of international organizations who can encourage the Kenyan youth, you know, to engage into entrepreneurship. Now, apart from the ICT, we're talking about modern technology, where we are now moving away from the rudimentary machines, those small machines, which, you know, 
uh, I mean, cannot be able to produce a lot of commodities, you know, but nowadays there's so many machines that are coming up. So we are talking of the new niches that are being uh, created by these, by these uh, machines, you know, talk about, uh, you know, uh, leveraging this particular uh, internet, information communication technology and outsourcing, franchising, you know, you know, we, we are having a lot of franchises coming up and this can offer an alternative way of entrepreneurship in, in, in these small enterprises and medium enterprises. And then talk about the new technology that is coming up. In fact, uh, this fourth industrial revolution, the government of Kenya has taken it seriously and we have got a committee that is working out on how to incorporate this in our micro, small and medium enterprises. I find out this to be a very huge opportunity for, for entrepreneurs. And then the policy implication. Also the policy can offer an opportunity. Of course, the country is gearing up to be a middle income uh, and to, be, to, 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 to industrialize in the year 2030. We have got vision 2030 and sessional papers that have been, uh, have been written, the 2012 of the 2005, and then the big four agenda that is anchored on, uh, on, 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 on when we are, what we are talking about. Uh, one of the component is about manufacturing industry and it's indicating that it has to grow by 20%. And this vision 2030 is the one that has led to the Konza city, which now you know, is under construction and it's going to provide very huge, huge opportunity. It's around 2,000 acres of land that is around 60 kilometers away from Nairobi. So that one, more of in urban areas and it's going to have a very huge opportunity. Initially, I did say something about the, the way the country is, 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 is administered. We have the counties. Now the counties is similar to the states. Now also they are being encouraged through this vision 2030 and the big four agenda to also come up with the opportunities, you know, at, at county level, because in Kenya, talk of Nairobi, that's the capital city, that's each and every person would like to be. And that's where a lot of opportunities, especially with small farms, many of the farms coming up in this particular uh, uh, city. Now, also market access. Now the market access, especially uh, the government has uh, put in place what we are talking about the 30% of the procurement uh, opportunities for women and youth, what popularly they are calling it abbreviated as AGPO, access to government procurement opportunities. Now this, you know, 30% is given to, in fact, whenever they, they advertise for the tenders, 30% is afforded on the farms that are managed by women and youths. And then there's also a policy of buy Kenya, build Kenya policy, you know, strategy whereby they're encouraging because when you look at Africa at the moment, I would like to say that most of the Africa, I don't know why we are so much obsessed with goods from Western country, if not Western country nowadays, we are moving to Eastern countries, east, east, uh, to Asia where China now, most of the people are consuming goods of China, you know, so we encourage this. In fact, the president is in the forefront of encouraging that we should be able to buy goods from Kenya. And also talk about regional economic integration, a huge, huge market in East African community that serves the, most of the countries in East, East Africa. It's a very good market if tapped, you know, these micro small enterprises, you know, in each and every uh, aspect of things they want to produce can work out very well. Now, another opportunity that is coming up and is directly related to bringing up these enterprises include the access to finance. You know, talking about the government playing a very major role in having what we call Women Enterprise Fund and Youth Enterprise Development Fund. Now in these particular funds, what happens is that these are tailored towards women and youths, whereby those who have got opportunities are encouraged you know, to, by being given loans as well as technical skills. Uh, and in fact, this Youth Enterprise Development Fund is one of the models that has led to the World Bank, you know, 
coming in and coming up with a new program that is known as Kenya Youth Employment Opportunity Project, whereby youths who have not afforded the university education, say those ones who could not be able to go beyond primary school or beyond secondary school, are being trained and later being given funds to start businesses. This is a very huge, huge opportunity for them to come up with enterprises. And then the circles, you know, now that is this particular circles, in fact, through the, through the proclamation of the government, they have insisted that all the, in the, all the transport, sec in the transport sector, the only enterprise they have to form what we call a circle, you know, and this particular circle, like for example, if there are any vehicles, they are under one circle, you know, uh, such that, you know, they can be able to move as a group. So probably social, ent social entrepreneurship comes into perspective there and be able to access funds as a group. They use group dynamics to pay, you know, loans, you know, from the money they, they get. They, that's, you know, from the salary they get or the income they get, that is a guarantee, you know, that, that, that acts like, like, like a guarantee for them, you know, getting these particular loans. Now, microfinance institutions, this specifically, you know, for women and youth, you know, basically they tailor them because the access of finance to particular groups has been, you know, has been a problem for quite a, some times. And then the commercial banks, which are 44, and then venture funds, which have come up. There are so many venture funds that are 108, you know, and some of them even, you know, uh, like Safaricom itself. Safaricom is one of the leading uh, telecommunication uh, that is owned by Vodafone, you know, is the one, you know, they, they also have a venture capital which they are giving to, especially those who are musicians, you know, they, 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 are, they are giving them uh, some loans to further up their music. And then the capital markets. Also in the institutional support, you know, through public support institutions, we have these institutions that are giving out specifically the Kenya Industrial Research, the Kenya, the Kenya, Kenya Industrial Research and Development Institute, which is a research. And this has been credited even with coming up with, uh, with, 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 with the bread that is, in fact, in Kenya, you can be able to, to get bread that is made from cassava, you know. They did this particular research and they have even been funding some of the enter entrepreneurs and they are doing a lot of research in the food, in the food sector, especially in the, in the hospitality industry. Then we have got, we have got Kenya Industrial Property, is keeping which protects the pro, it protects the the intellectual, uh, you know, whatever somebody, any innovation somebody has come up with. Then uh, we all of this, and then the micro small enterprise authority, which you know promote uh, micro. Uh, micro, micro, small, and enterprise, especially in coming up with the apps. This is run by the government. It's a government institution similar to the small uh, business uh, organization that is United States of America. And then we talk of university incubators. Even university incubators in Kenya are somehow we have some of our graduates and undergraduate students who go to these incubators, come up with ideas, and then these ideas, they can nurture them into uh, into businesses, which it can also be uh, uh, can also be industries, and then talk about IBM Lab. You know, IBM has constructed a, a lab in Kenya, which they are doing a lot of research. You know, and also Google and Huawei. In fact, the Google and Huawei are supporting one of the programs in Kenya that is known as the Ajira, where we have you know youths being trained on enterprise, how to nurture entrepreneurship and enterprise. Now, coming to this coronavirus era, you know, we know that most of the farms, you know, are having uh, problems, how to cushion themselves. Well, the government has come up with measures, though these particular measures, you know, it requires because we have a new constitution, we had a new constitution which, you know, it has to undergo some bureaucracies, you know, the parliament, and you know that uh, uh, with this social distance era, you know, when are they going to meet? How are they going to approve this particular act? 
you know, they have been proposing these uh, six acts, the national, that, 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 that directly, you know, encourage these small enterprises, you know, to be able to be sustainable and also to continue running because with this COVID, we are anticipating that uh, we are going to have problems in, with, with this, in this particular sector. The, the residential income tax for corporations, you know, the government is thinking of reducing it. Uh, and then the turnover tax rate from the current, uh, for the MSMEs, and then the temporary suspension of listing with the credit bureau because this CRB, you know, you know, most of most of the most of these firms, you know, have, you know, have, have have taken loans. They have taken loans, and these particular loans they cannot be able to service them during this Corona uh, virus era. So the government is trying to liaise with the CRB to ask them a little bit to be able to have them to have a reprieve so that they can be able to pay. And then the value VAT, value added tax, has been reduced. However, it's yet to be seen how these particular measures are benefiting the micro small enterprise because it was just recently when they were, you know, when they were proposed and the parliament has to be able to ratify all of them. And then the Central Bank of Kenya, you know, coming to this particular lowering of the interest, given that, uh, you know, commercial banks, you know, they are also in business, they are also firms. So we don't know how far this is going to take effect. So all of these are measures that uh, the, 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 the government has proposed, you know, to, to cushion this uh, particular small enterprises. Now, apart from this, you know, the government is insisting that, you know, the transaction aspect, you know, the, the M-PESA, you know, they are encouraging that uh, people should be able to be transacting their activities using the M-PESA, that is the mobile money transfer. And uh, this has even taken over, uh, has even surpassed the credit cards. Nowadays, we don't see a lot of credit cards. If you go to the business, they are not obsessed with the credit or uh, debit cards, you know. In fact, the till numbers, the till number means the number of the transaction where you're going to be able to put that particular amount of uh, transaction you have incurred, and then it is, it is wired through the M-PESA. Now, allow me to get into the conclusions and recommendations. Now, in, in Kenya, what I would like to say is that uh, the macro, small, and medium enterprises still plays a very big role. You know, especially given that Kenya has been an agricultural country and the agriculture now, you know, has in one or another been dwindling at some point. So still this particular sector sh should be able to be assisted. However, you know, the government, you know, when you look at do they have to get into it directly or do they have to, you know, to play a facilitating role? You know, this has always been a debate in, in Kenya. And then most of the when you look at most of the enterprises, you know, nowadays that are coming up, you know, in this 20th, in this century, most of them are ICT based, you know, most of the Kenyan, Kenyan youths, most of the Kenyans are taking advantage of, uh, you know, the, 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 this information communication technology, especially in the mobile sector, you know, and, uh, and also some other technologies. We also need more support for micro, small, and medium enterprises through business support services. Now, this business support services is very, very important, uh, you know, especially the training, especially the, the finance, you know, the soft one. You talk about the, the market, you know, uh, like the government is trying, you know, a lot of it is required for these uh, enterprises. And then the need to address the missing middle in Kenya. You know, the missing middle here means the medium enterprises, you know, most of them, we don't have a big proportion of the, of, the, of, 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 the, of the medium enterprises. So they need to have these particular uh, enterprises. So, and uh, researchers, we are trying to see what could be these particular problems that are making this sector not to, uh, uh, not to have many, many, many farms. And then need to come up with measures to cushion the coronavirus and post-coronavirus period. We are very happy with the Google, you know, they're coming up, the Google are coming up with some measures which, you know, 
farms in Kenya can be able to take it up, even the Safaricom, you know, and a, other farms which are trying, you know, to, you know, to, 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 to build uh, this sector in Kenya. So this sector still remains to be the, the one which provides a lot and a lot of prospects, especially given that Africa is the next frontier, you know, you know, how do we, how can we be able to, to nurture it? And that's why probably we say there's a scramble for Africa from talk about Asian countries, you know, like China, talk about the Western countries, you know, there's a lot because Africa still remains to be the future prospect for the world. I thank you very much for the time. Hello? 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 I can hear you. I think Jeffrey might be muted. Yes, here we go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Jeff. Apparently, I'm, I'm very, I, can, I apologize for that particular video. It never came out the way I liked it. Well, I think, I think I've got a copy of it, so I'm, I'll take a look at it a little bit later. Um, this is a, a very comprehensive overview of, of what's happening in, in Kenya. And it's interesting that you identify that middle group because in the developed countries, um, mm -hmm. that is moderately uh, um, full. Um, but I've got, a, I've got a couple of questions. You didn't spend a lot of time talking about the educational initiatives to help prepare um, young people and um, owners and, and um, operators of, of micro, small and medium sized businesses. Um, you talk about providing services, um, but there, a lot of the gem data suggests that the educational um, system within countries helps feed that, that funnel. Um, yes. Is any of that going on in Kenya now? Yeah, th thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, at the moment in Kenya, there is a, the education system is being reviewed. Uh, we uh, initially we had uh, a system whereby we had uh, eight years in uh, that is uh, around in America we call it from grade one to eight. That is primary primary schools, and then uh, after that, the secondary school. That is uh, we, we, from form one to form four. And then after that, can, uh, somebody can go to the university or to a college, you know. But at the moment, we are having a review of the curriculum in which we, 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 we have introduced what is called competence-based curriculum, CB, CBC. Now that CBC is modeled around the American system whereby at the entry level, you know, a small child at the entry level can be able to, they can nurture the talent of that particular young person so that we don't have, because from study one to study eight, you know, uh, students in Kenya are exposed not to a specialization, but to a wide variety of subjects, such that you might, able, you might discover that some of uh, uh, the students, you know, uh, cannot be able to nurture their talent. But at the moment, the system of education that uh, is, has been revealed, uh, that, that has been introduced, is taking care of uh, those particular aspects in which we are going to have uh, the, 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 the child, you know, in the, basic, in the basic curriculum, this particular child will be able to take, you know, to, to, to be able to be taught, uh, you know, Get, uh, some of the subjects, but with a lot of emphasis on where this particular child can be able to concentrate. If it is engineering, music, or any other particular course that this particular young one can be able to move ahead with it, it's being put in place. Now, at the university, at the moment, we have been having, because I lecture at the university and at the same time, uh, uh, you know, I play a role in coming uh, uh, in reviewing of the curriculum. You know, we are trying to have that curriculum that 
that that that, that takes care of uh, the the needs of the industry you know the industry such that uh, we have had some review like in my institution we have reviewed the curriculum price whereby even we involve the industry the industrialists to come and tell us what is the right curriculum to have that can be able to take care of your needs so at this particular level i would say yes there has been and there has been some initiative to put in place those uh, the, the, those measures of reviewing the curricula. Okay, thank you. Um, another thing, another thought that came to me um, when you were talking about the Gonza Technology City, um, there's a group in Cairo um, led by Tatwir Misser who are actually building an entire community somewhat similar to, to the initiative um, at, at Gonza, um, but they're including a university. Uh, that's right. going to emphasize entrepreneurship, small business management, and engineering as a way to to um, feed the the economy. Um, and so th that's a that's a very interesting and and innovative approach to helping to meet the needs of of the uh, small business uh, and micro business uh, community. Um, has has anybody thought of that for for the Gonza Technology City? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yes, in fact, uh, in the video you can be able to see that it has been a multidisciplinary approach, whereby uh, we 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 are having government uh, together with the uh, the industri the industrialists, together with the university. You know, uh, those I mean, uh, the universities. You know have also been included. And uh, in fact, to, to say that the, the government was uh, proposing even to have a university within the Konza city. Okay, good, good. Um, one of the things that I noticed, I mean, Kenya has a, a fairly comprehensive group of organizations and policies aimed at at improving all levels of the economy but but from from your presentation it looks like that they're really focusing on the middle and the micro and small uh level because that's where the growth is going to be um mm -hmm. as you were going through it it struck me that a lot of the initiatives align very well with the united nations sustainable development goals is that a conscious effort United Nations Sustainable Goal. That's right. I would say yes, uh, yes, Sir Jeffrey. It's true. It's true that uh, the government, a lot of initiatives that are being uh, put in place, you know, especially the policy implication, you know, uh, you know, uh, they, you know, they, most of them, you know, have to do with the sustainable uh, development goals, especially for the poverty alleviation. Mm -hmm. uh, remember that. Remember that uh, these micro, small, and medium enterprises, you know, when the organization came to Kenya to do a, to, perform, to do a study in early 70s, one of the things they discovered was that this particular sector looks like it has always been an avenue for the poor people to get income. So I would say that, yes, most of these policies that have been put in place have always been in tandem with the United Nations, especially sustainable development goals. However, I would like to say that most of these policies, like for example, the big four agenda that the president of the, of the Republic of Kenya, you know, gave it, it was around, it came up around, say that, uh, after 2017, around 2018, 2019, this agenda is super, but the implementation is the one <laughs> that has always been a problem, especially given that uh, I would like to say that our constitution looks like it's very, very good. Uh, it's very, very ambitious, you know. So whenever some of the things are being, uh, uh, have, been, have been suggested in this, you know, we have the constitution, you know, coming in. So the implementation becomes a problem. Remember that when I said about the coronavirus, the measures that the, that the government had, had, had suggested, you know, 
looking at the way they're supposed to be implemented, it requires the parliament to sit and we have got two parliaments, the Senate and, 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 and the other parliament, you know. So they, you know, they are very nice. Most of them are tailored towards the SDGs, but then the implementation is where the problem arises. Thank you. I, I think that's a uh, universal challenge. Sure. <laughs> um, the, the other thing that, that um, I was curious about, there's a lot of regional, I think there's a lot of regional collaboration that's emerged in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, what role does, does Kenya play um, in working with, with other nations to improve the entire region? Okay, thank you very much. Now, when it comes to, uh, to the Sub-Saharan uh, Sub Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa originates from all the way from Egypt, even Nigeria, coming up to South Africa. Those are Sub-Saharan Africa, all countries that, you know, uh, you know uh, below Sahara. Now, uh, talking of Kenya. Now, first of all, Kenya is a member of uh, East African community. And this African community comprises of, of course, Kenya, we've got Tanzania, we've got Uganda, then we talk of uh, Rwanda, and then Burundi. In fact, Rwanda is another country that is coming up very fast in, 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 in information communication technology. So this East African community, you know, uh, Kenya has been spearheading uh, its 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 continu its its con uh, continuity and also its participation by you know having in place you know uh, uh, measures which they can be able to discuss with other countries and apart from that we also have IGAD now IGAD uh, uh, is 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 has this another this this is another uh, organization that you know has to do with the uh, with the desertification, you know, and we talk of, Ethiopia is a member of IGAD, uh, then Somalia, then talking about, uh, we also have uh, Sudan, you know, this IGAD has also been promoting, especially in the Northeastern part of Kenya. And uh, that's why uh, we, we, we are having uh, American farms, they are constructing what we call uh, the, 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 the wind power, the wind power, uh, the wind power, uh, electricity that is being generated uh, from the northeastern part of Kenya that is that is a desert. We are also talking about the Comesa, the common market, the common market of eastern and southern Africa, which you know has been trying to tap on this particular market by having the member states. You know the member states, South Africa, uh, Botswana, Malawi, Zambia are part of that particular Comesa. Even uh, Egypt is part of a uh, Comesa, and uh, uh, you know there has been trade. You know there have been nurturing trade, though uh, in most of the time this Comesa has not been very much vibrant. You know it is uh, not quite vibrant the way it used to be earlier on, because some of the states are forming their own, you know, their own organizations for the benefit of uh, of trade. So to speak, Kenya has been playing a very big role. Uh, especially even uh, at the moment, uh, coming to educational sector, you know, uh, we're having this IBM. Uh, the, the, the IBM, uh, the IBM lab is in Nairobi, Kenya. It has been assisting so much, especially in, uh, in, in research, big data, especially the big data, you know, for countries, you know, ranging in Eastern Africa, even as far as South Africa, though as South Africa here, they already, have constructed the IBM lab, you know. But, you know, Kenya has been playing a very, very, very big role in Eastern Africa. Even with this, the Konza city, you know, we have been having uh, most of the students from other universities, you know, even the IHUB, this IHUB and, uh, and uh, the, the IHUB whereby we, there is a story that has been written uh, by, by the Metisachuset uh, University about about, uh, about, about how this ICT, the mobile banking, has been able to, you know, to encourage uh, or to, to move Kenya from poverty, you know, to riches. So I would say, I would say that Kenya, 
you know, has been playing a very big role in Eastern, Southern, and even Sahara, Sub-Saharan Africa in a nurturing, uh, you know, if not trade, uh, also trying even to even welcome entrepreneurs. I would like to tell you that uh, a very big percentage of the Somalis, you know, remember that Somali, Somali has been having a lot of problem, especially political. And I would like to tell you that most of the entrepreneurs, in fact, when you come to the to Nairobi area, Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya, you'll get that there is a place called Isili. Isili. That Isili region is dominated by the Somalis. So we, with that, you know, we've been assisting, if not having a lot of the refugee, also trying to play a role in export, even trade with our neighbors. Thank you. Very good, very good. Um, one, one last question from, from me, and this might be a little bit unfair, but mm -hmm. has anybody taken a look at the effectiveness of the, of the programs? I mean, some of them have been around, some of these policies have been around since the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and you always end up asking, so what? Um, so has anybody done the research to determine what the impact of the policies have been and how have they been, how have they been modified based on what you learned? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, for example, I, 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 di I did a study on the barriers that are affecting uh, the, this particular enterprises, but this mm -hmm. is a study that, that was conducted somewhere there around uh, 90s, uh, around uh, you know, till, uh, uh, early 2000. So uh, basically at the moment, I would like to say that uh, we don't have a lot of studies that have looked at this particular uh, this this the, 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 this particular policies that have been put in place, and that's why we're having a problem a mismatch between the drafting of these particular policies and the implementation part, and it's one of the reasons why we are not having these particular small micro small enterprises graduate. I mean, micro small enterprises graduating to the media, to, to, the, to the medium or middle, middle enterprises. So I would like to say that uh, not very many studies, maybe those studies that have been conducted have not been documented. But at the moment, no substantive study that has been carried out the whole country. Okay. <clears throat> the reason I asked is it, it looks like you've got a really uh, broad and, and comprehensive set of policies and programs. Sure. Um, and and it would be wonderful to know that they're that they're working or which ones are and which ones aren't. I think other countries could learn from your experience. Sure, sure. sure. Mm. Well, we have um, mm. we've well, I've learned a lot from from your uh, session here, and uh, yeah. very much appreciate um, you having. Uh, put this presentation together. Um, it was, it's a very comprehensive one. Um, this session of ICSB Exchange um, has been recorded and people, members will be able to access it once it's um, been, been edited. And um, um, I'm pretty sure that, and I can speak up if he's still here, I'm pretty sure that the videos um, will be included in the, in, in the recorded session. Oh, yeah. Okay, now. Mm -hmm. ah. Do you have any, you. Um, any final comments you'd like to make? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, moderator. I would like to, uh, to, to, to thank you, Dr. Free Alves, for moderating the session. I would also like to, to thank uh, Ayman for having uh, me present this particular webinar because uh, at the moment uh, in uh, Africa, the whole world, you know, we are very much idle and, uh, and what is happening is that because we are keeping the social distance. So this is one way of engaging us, especially the scholars on uh, this, on what is happening, you know. And uh, I would like to say that this 
It's a very good initiative, and I would like to thank the National Council of Small Businesses for having uh, thought about this webinar. And I would like to say that it has been very much informative because there was a session that was previously facilitated uh, all the way from United Arab Emirates. You know, I learned a lot, especially to do with United Arab Emirates. It has been a country I've been passing through when, you know, en route to America. So I would like to say that this is a very good initiative and I'd like to, 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 to tell uh, uh, Ayman that keep it up, it's good. So thank you very much and it's good that we should be able to promote uh, the micro, small and medium enterprises because they are offering alternative uh, aspect in this particular Kenya and East Africa uh, and Africa as a whole. So thank you very much and uh, I sign off, thank you. All right, thank you very much.